Good morning. God Good morning. bless you all. Good morning. God bless you on this wonderful Wednesday chapel service. For those that are watching, thank you so much for joining us. Um, as we start chapel service, the best way to start is inviting our Lord, our Savior, to be to be our guest of honor in this place. So if you can please join me by closing your eyes as we talk to our Father. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, saying thank you, Father God. Thank you for another day of life, Lord. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your kindness, for your love, Father God, that endures forever, Father. Thank you, Father God, because in the midst of everything that's happening, we can feel your presence. Amen. We can feel you in this place, Father God. Yes. I declare in the name of Jesus, Father, that you'll be with those families, Father, that need you in this time, Father God. I pray, Father God, for those that are battling any ache, any sickness, Father God, in the name of Jesus, because of your blood, Father God, is that we're healed. Amen. And we declare in the name of Jesus, we pray for uh, Miss Santiago, Miss Sanders at OCPS, those that are not feeling good this morning, Father God, we pray for them. We lift them up to you, Lord, knowing that you are the doctors of all doctors, Father, yes. and that you're the one that will be healing them, Father God, according to your will. Yes. We pray and we put in petition Mrs. Belsa's prayer request. Of, of health and safety also for those um, heroes essential heroes like doctors nurses police yes. firefighters father god teachers we pray for all of them as they do their very best father god to to keep us safe father thank you for them father be with them protect them cover them cover their families father <laughs> and we pray for a wonderful chapel service where where we're going to hear your word our daily bread father god Feed us this morning, Father. We would like to worship you, glorify your name, praise you, Father, because you deserve all things, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your major gift of sending your son, Jesus, to die for our sins. Yes. When we don't deserve it, Father, we will never repay you. But thank you, Father, for that major sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now we have Mr. Batiste with the pledges. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. If you love the Lord, somebody shout amen. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, David said this here in the song. He said, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. And we are glad to be here today. We want to welcome our family, our Osceola Christian Preparatory uh, School family, all our campuses from Point Siena, uh, Point Siena North, Osceola Christian Prep and from our St. Cloud campus, we want to welcome you in today. Uh, we just blessed to be here. We miss you all. We're so uh, uh, blessed what God is doing in the midst of our missing people that God is working big time. As was mentioned earlier in our prayer, uh, we love, we love to come to chapel. It's our family time. It's where we all come together in one accord and bless the name of the Lord and raise up a standard. Amen. God bless you. We want to open up uh, again with our with our pledges. And uh, if you will, join me as we pledge our flag, American flag, our Christian flag, and our Bible, our word. If you will, if you can stand and uh, hand across the chest, we will start with our American flag on three. Ready? One, two, three. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all and to our christian flag to my right my left here i pledge allegiance to the christian flag and to the savior whose kingdom it stands one savior crucified risen and coming again to bring life and liberty to all who believe and for our babies our bible if you're there with your bibles ready let's go on three one two three i pledge allegiance to the bible god's holy word I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide this word in my heart that I might not sin against God. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're going to be blessed today. God has a word for you. So be prepared to receive it. Amen. God bless you. Now we're going to hear from our, our director, Mr. Uh, Mr. Baldwin. He's going to come in and do some announcements for us this morning. Thank you. Well, good morning. Um, once again, um, we think about you every day. 
And um, even though you're not here with us physically, you're here with us in spirit and in our hearts. Um, we're just excited uh, about all the things that are going on today. Um, just in a minute, our student government president, Chris and Bayonne, is going to come up and share with you. Um, we're planning and anticipating the opportunity for when you guys are able to be back on campus with us. And we're going not we're going it's going to be a, a celebration. It's going to be a time of excitement. And we're also planning on ways to make sure we keep everybody safe. So even though we're not with you every day, know that we're working hard to make this distance learning amazing and to also make the return and our school even better when you get back. Um, at this time, I'd like for uh, Christian to come up. Once Christian come up, Christian. Once Christian's finished, we got a very special video today from one of our students, Lainey. Um, she's really opening up and sharing her heart. Um, come right off this incredible celebration of Easter and the resurrection last week. Really how um, God's made an amazing change in her life. But I look forward to that. And it's good to see you. If there's something you're wanting to share, like Christian is, like Laney is, like other students are, make sure you let your teachers know. We want you to still be involved with this. Amen. So yeah. turn it over to our student government president. Sir, thank you. Um, good morning, everybody. I just wanted to make a really quick announcement with really good news to all of my seniors and the 2020 the class of 2020 students. Um, I just wanted to say that graduation is still in the question. It may be delayed, and you may have to wait a little bit, but I promise you that you will get graduation. And as for prom, it's not out of the question yet, and we are working our hardest to make sure that you guys get everything that you deserve. Thank you. All right. All right. Yeah. This is probably, I'm going to hope and say that this is my last time recording this because I already done this like four times and I failed miserably. But it's okay. Hey guys, um, it's me. You guys all know me. And uh, I miss you guys. And, um, I wanted to kind of bless you all with the spoken word because um, I kind of feel like we all forget where God has like taken us out from or like kind of like where we come from in a way. So I'm here to remind you, but I'm here to kind of like show you that even though you're doing the best in life, never forget where God takes like took you from you know never never forget the blessing that he did for you never never forget that that you was once a broken person too and god saved you and that didn't have to that didn't have to be you know so yeah so you gonna see if this one comes out right you gonna see my pain god take it away depressed and stressed god take this way off my chest my sadness and pain, Lord, give me the strength. When I tell you God healed me without me even knowing it's a blessing, I come to the realization that I know that back home when my heart was cold, you were there in the midst of my storm. You were the one carrying me through. Little did I know there was you. Little did I know through the midst of that storm, you were the one carrying me through. You were the one who took me out the hell I once called home. I remember always wanting to be asleep just to escape my reality, but it was even coming to a point where in my sleep the devil still attacked me. Now I can say I want to be alive and awake. I'd rather be awake and breathing than have my family grieving. It didn't have to be this way, but you chose to wake me up that next day. You gave me another chance at life when in reality I didn't deserve the light. Because that night when I was on that floor crying for my Lord, I thought you never heard me. But the next day, I never knew he was going to set me free from those thoughts that was kept was keeping me in captivity from the Almighty King. You woke me up the next day. And to say that I'm okay and that you gave me saving grace is something I never thought I'd say. I wake up knowing that you healed me from my thoughts of suicide. I know I messed up and failed, but if I knew that all this pain I went through was only to make me better, I would have believed in you more. Maybe my faith should have been bigger. If I would have knew you let things happen, not to break me, but to build me, I would have always wanted to leave. The love I have for you is something I'll never understand, but I'm sorry if I question where me and you stand. I'm sorry if I ever offended you. Some, sometimes I think, why didn't I follow you sooner? 
to say I love you is, a, is an understatement. But I don't just love you, I'm in a deep love with you. Something undescribable. Because when everyone failed me, you never failed me, you never left me in any of my storms. Though my father left, left me, you was always there to protect me and cover me and just to tell me my daughter just lean on me. I must admit, I was scared to ever say I love you. I was scared to call you my father. I was scared to let you in and see that the, and let you see that the daughter you created isn't perfect after all. The daughter you created wasn't following your your rules. The daughter you created wasn't even following you. In my head, I wonder since my earthly father left, why would you? Why would my mighty king love a girl like me? When I came to the realization that you needed me in my mother's womb, you knew me. You, you knew my every move. You knew what I would do, yet you still loved me. I realized it, it was you who loved me through, through my heartaches and pain, through my depression, through my unknown identity, through my multiple attempts of, su of suicide. I came to conclude it was you who got me through. It was you who carried me through. It was you who put your hands on me and declared me you from once, from everything I once knew. What was hard to say I love you became so easy because I know this love is straight from you. Because I know I was fearfully and wonderfully made by you. I realized the love you had for me once I saw that Jesus was on that cross just to save me. That didn't have to be. I felt so broken and bruised, but you constantly told me, Lady, don't worry, I'm still going to use you. You constantly told me, Lady, don't worry, I got you, I'll carry you through. I was broken and you fixed me. I was blind, but now I can say you fixed me to where I can see. To say I love you now is so easy to me. Because you have shown me what it, it truly is to be set free from the devil who had me in captivity. Thank you for loving me when I felt like no one did. Thank you for being there by my side. Thank you for saving me. This is my love letter to you. same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they walked along, they were talking about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stopped short sadness written across their faces. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, You must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened there in the last few days. What things? Jesus asked. The things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, they said. He was a prophet who did powerful miracles, and he was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priests and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. Then some women from our group of his followers were at his tomb early this morning, and they came back with an amazing report. They said his body was missing, and they had seen angels who told them, Jesus is alive. Some of our men ran out to see, and sure enough, his body was gone, just as the women had said. Then Jesus said to them, You foolish people, you find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Then Jesus took them through the writings of Moses and all the prophets, explaining from all the scriptures the things concerning himself. By this time, they were nearing Emmaus and the end of their journey. Jesus acted as if he were going on, but they begged him, Stay the night with us, since it's getting late. So he went home with them. As they sat down to eat, he took the bread and blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them. Suddenly, their eyes were open, 
and they recognized him. And at that moment, he disappeared. They said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? And within the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem. There, they found the 11 disciples and the others who had gathered with them, who said, the Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. Well, I love that story, and I loved Lainey's testimony. Um, she talked about God's love. We've talked about John 3.16. We've talked every week, and I'm not going to skip this week. Uh, we've talked about the five greatest things. I hope you all know that by now. You know what those are. Uh, which one's coming? Which one hasn't happened yet? Jesus, Jesus back. is coming back. Woo! Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah, let's be excited about that. So... I love the story about, uh, it's called the Emmaus Road. Uh, a little bit long, but lots and lots of good stuff. It's almost like the entire story. Everything almost that you need to know is explained right there in that story. Realize, too, in the story that it happened the morning or during the day of when the ladies went and, and, and found uh, the tomb empty. So right away... Jesus ends up where? Out on a road talking with some guys. Now, this is my favorite part, and it's not really in the story, but think about our nature. If a lot of people had treated you bad, if a lot of people for years and years had been trying to catch you and get you, that's the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious leaders, okay, and they killed you, and you come back to life, our nature would be what? I'm going to go show them. <laughs> right? I am going to walk in there and say, what you guys tried to do, it didn't work. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. So you guys at home, if there's somebody else in the house with you, I want you to look at them right now and go, nanny, 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 you didn't get me. Do it right now. Good, Mr. Brown, I hear it. Nanny, nanny, you didn't get me. Okay, that's our nature. But think about what Jesus did. Right after he rose, he went and hung out with some of his disciples. Walked with them. Talked with them. Shared with them. I like the fact that he just kind of appeared. I also liked... The, it's my favorite part that God didn't reveal that it was Jesus. And then Jesus acted like, hey guys, what's going on? What's been going on lately? And they're like, where have you been? Can you guys really see and feel how this, how this happened? Of course, Jesus knew the answer. So I have one favorite part was that he didn't go into the priests and the, and the Romans and everybody who judged him and killed him, okay, and wave it in front of his face. What he did do is go and hang out with some of his disciples. So my next favorite part was that he kind of kept that a secret. He kind of wanted to see what they were going to say. And they did everything in that man, they, what they shared in the story, and that's why the story is a little bit long, what they shared was everything up to what they were thinking and feeling at the time. Realize in the story it said, because we thought he was the Messiah, but they killed him. Like that was the end. Well, they didn't know that the third greatest thing ever to happen in the history of the world was he was supposed to die. They didn't know that. They couldn't, they couldn't figure that out. And so Jesus starts fleshing it out, starts filling in all the gaps, any questions that they didn't even know how to ask at the time. He starts to go from the scriptures. The whole, this is where the story happens in the Bible. He explains all the way from the beginning, and we already talked about way at the beginning something that happened that promised Jesus. But he started to explain this again. Showing them, hey, this is why that had to happen. This is why that had to happen. 
they still didn't realize it was Jesus after he showed them. Move along. They're walking seven miles. How many of us have ever walked seven miles? Okay, that's a couple hours. At least two, maybe three. Okay, so they're having a good time, chilling. Okay, they, I see pictures of the Emmaus Road, and they show Jesus. Of course, he's dressed all white and shiny. You'll see this picture now that you've that you've heard the story. Okay, and there's all these beautiful trees and everything else. We don't know what, really what it looked like, but I kind of think chilling, like they were hanging out. It probably was a little bit hot. Okay, and they didn't have big trees like that were on, on, that, on that road. There's still no big trees. But they're there and they're walking and they're sharing and he's putting all these pieces together. Everything that we've talked about already and everything that, we've, that we share at chapel, every one of your scriptures all leads up to and points to Jesus doing this. So at the end of their journey, they go, come on in, stranger. Let's let's eat. It's taking a long time to get here. Hot. Maybe it's towards the end of the day. Let's. I, we want to keep hearing what you have to say. So he sits down, and just like it said, he breaks the bread, blesses it, and what happens? The eyes open. Poof, he disappears. <laughs> All right. That's kind of a cool thing. So, we already did the nanny nanny, you didn't get me, okay? We're going to do something else now, too, okay? Because if you have a little brother or sister, I know, you guys know what peekaboo is, right? You guys know peekaboo? Peekaboo, okay? So, Jesus didn't do peekaboo. He did say, here I am, I'm alive. And then, he, and then he left. All right? So we're going to do the peekaboo actions, but I want you to do this Easter style. Okay? Let's do this Easter style. Mr. Brown, I know you're up for this. Okay? And other people here, I want you to go, I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Like a peekaboo. <clears throat> I'm alive. Okay? I'm alive. Poofy was gone. So we've also shared, and, and we can you can go back and read this story again. We could decompress and, and keep on talking about this a whole lot, okay? But I want you to see Jesus spent the day with those guys, made an impression on them, shared this entire story, the whole reason why all this is written with those disciples. And then he goes, I'm alive. Poof. What did he accomplish for those men, for those people that were eating and that shared the time with him? It's the same thing we talked about last week and the week before. It's one word. It says all Jesus asks us to do to be saved. And it's belief. Amen. He showed them who he was. And they believed. Remember last week, I stood up here and I stomped my feet and I'm going to do it again. Don't let anyone make it more complicated than that. I'll go back to share what Lainey shared. She gave testimony of no matter where she was, no matter what she was going through, those disciples walking along the road thought their whole world had come to an end. We're honestly feeling that right now. The world's changing. I'm not saying to an end. I'm not prophesying that. Okay? But I am saying the world's changing. What are we supposed to do? One word. Believe. Amen. Amen. Believe he died for you. And he rose again. And then I can't wait to share with you what's going to happen next week. And that'll, I say, wrap up our Easter season. But I want you to, to know, if this Bible opens, it points towards Jesus' death and resurrection no matter what we talk about. Amen. And his message of loving each other. 
He went and loved on his disciples rather than going nanny, nanny, nanny. And then he showed them the peekaboo so that help them to believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Let's jump right into birthdays. I've got them laying around here. So I've done St. Cloud first. I'm going to make them not first. We'll start uh, geographically with Point Sienna New Campus. Uh, we celebrate today Maria Bernandez, Bern, Bernades, Camila de, de Rosa, Annabel Santos, Gianna Valme, Arnaldo Perez, Zion Wynn, Noelis Melendez, Lila Torres, uh, Yariel Reyes, Joshua Figueroa, Rafael Pohl, Sarah Figueroa, Mauricio Malik. Celebrate you guys at Point Siena, and now Point Siena North. Benjamin Tapia, Yaniel Navarro, Rowan Vasquez, Kamara Scott. We got some teachers with birthdays and staff, Mrs. Martinez and Mrs. Rodriguez. Yay. Okay, let's be happy. So at Osceola, we have Brian Patterson, Gabriel Galindez, uh, Chandra Hasley, Jacob Colaruso, Alexa Blandin, Alexa Melendez, Charlize Algarin, and a staff, Mr. Cruz. We celebrate them. And just a couple at St. Cloud, Verona Mosher, and Ryan Boss. We celebrate all of you guys with birthdays this week. I want everyone's help here singing. Ready? Yes. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Happy birthday, God bless you. Cha cha cha. Happy birthday. of our chapel service are soaring eagles yeah. for you guys working hard showing love to your teachers to your parents um, I've seen a lot of pictures you guys receiving your pizza which is awesome keep, keep, please keep sending those pictures to us we enjoy that you're enjoying your pizza and and, and having fun with all of this um, I will start with kindergarten for the Point Siena New Campus Sarai McCarty Edwin Rodriguez First grade, Leah Rodriguez and Sanaya Morales. Second grade, Gabriel Delgado and Joel Diaz. Third grade, James McCarty and Isamar Garcia. Fourth grade, Christian Quintana and Anna Ho. Fifth grade, Jason Da Rosa and Tamia Sams. Sixth grade, Nicholas Walsh and Jaden Paul. Combo class, Ms. Thomas, Ian Price and Lila Torres. Combo class, Ms. Cordero's class, Normaris Vasquez and Ezekiel Vallejo. Seventh grade, Evernice Velasquez and Elijah Casado. Eighth grade, Quindria Nelson and Sierra Weaver. Ninth grade, Lacey DeZelia and Rafael Paul. Tenth grade, Lauren Vega and Javnel Velasquez. And 11th and 12th grade, Ms. Jackson class, Lara Reese and Andrea Figueroa. Good job, people. Good job, Mr. Grass. Very proud of you all. Good job. Good job. Amen. Soaring eagles. They will mount up with wings as eagles. God bless you. Good morning again. Good morning. Uh, we want to do our uh, soaring eagle from St. Cloud campus, starting with uh, kindergarten with Mrs. Uh, White Acres class, Cameron Venters, and Thiago Gomez. From Ms. Ruiz's first grade class, Victoria Acevedo and Kendrick Torres, uh, Ms. Harville, second and third graders, uh, Kenneth Torres and Brianna Sullivan, four, uh, third and fourth grade, Mrs. Gonzalez, Verana Mosher and Sophia Chapman, fifth grade, Mr. Winger, Roger Mosher and Marcos Varela, sixth grade, Ms. Hankson, Victoria Velez and Jesse Hoyt. Oh, Jesse, young man, 
just received, received Christ, baptized, amen, recently. Uh, seventh grade, Miss Torres' class, Zoe Poti and uh, Isabella McAdams. Eighth grade, uh, Mr. Acevedo, Javier Hernandez, and Gabrielle Sewell. Ninth and tenth grade, Mr. Hurd, Wyatt Persons, and Roselle Martinez. And uh, eleven and twelfth grade, Mr. Bass class, Jeremy Gamara, and Will Elliott. Thank you very much. Congratulations to you. All right, for our Osceola campus, from Ms. Pagan's class, Alexis Chinea and Abram Nieves. From Ms. Juarez's class, Taraji Barksdale and Jonathan Urias. From Ms. Ruiz's class, Rose Grimsley and Titus Smith. From Ms. Rosario's class, Ivan Paneke and Jomar Hunez. From Ms. Velez's class, Josiah Rivera and Dezani Rojas. From Mr. Vigoro's class, Liz Ocasio and Jacob Rodriguez. From Mr. Whitaker and Ms. Saunders' class, Robina Brutus and John Carlos Martinez. From Mr. Rodriguez's class is Rana Burns and Janice Del Carmen. From Mr. Cruz's class, Randy Charles and Ricky Hernandez. From Ms. Lewis Saint's class is Malachi Waterhouse and Ariana Tavares. From Coach Slade's class, Shayla Paulus and Charlize Algorin. From Ms. Smith's class, William Merkel and Deshaun Boyd. And from Mr. Baldwin's class, my class is Gianna Brew and Linford Davis. Good job, guys. All right. Well, good morning, good morning. Uh, God bless you all again uh, this morning uh, from Point Seattle North Campus. Uh, one thing that Mr. Whitaker said that we must believe. One thing I want to say to that is God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. good. You got to believe. Glory be to God. We're going to go ahead and celebrate our, our Soren Eagles uh, from North Campus Kindergarten classes. Fernando Malaude, Laolu Adalakan, uh, from first grade, Victoria Rivera, Anaya Scott, second grade, Jacob Dominguez and Jade Lindor, third grade, Ariana Kelch and Fumi Adalakan, fourth grade, Miguel Rivera, Rowan Vasquez, fifth grade, Anthony Murphy, Alondra Colon, for 6th grade, Yadier Diaz, Gabriela Natal. 7th grade, Melody Quinones and Gelia Hernandez. From 8th grade, Miss Rivera's class, Gianna Baker and Adriana Leo. 8th grade for Miss Tobin, Brandon Kerr and Jaysmar is Irizari. For 9th grade, Eliana Tavares and Anjali Rivera. 10th grade, Mr. Fernandez's class, Cheyenne Kerr. Daniel Gangunasela, 10th grade, Mendez class is Antal Akiar and Luis Garcia. 11th grade, Angel Marie Hernandez, Joelise Guzman, and 12th grade, we have Erica Nelson and Arthur Bentley. And we will uh, want to just let you know that we had a few Soaring Eagles that we announced before we went out on spring break, so we did not forget you. We will include you in those uh, special deliveries to your home for Kevin Torres, Leila Bayon, and Fabian Rodriguez. So God bless them. Hallelujah. Let's give them a praise. Congratulations. <laughs> and we want to go ahead and just end today in prayer. Again, uh, believing that our Lord and our Savior has not forsaken us nor forgotten us. Amen. Uh, he is with us always. And I know that all things will work together for the good of those who love the Lord. Amen. So if you could just bow your heads with me and let's end in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, the name that is above all names, Father, we come before your throne of mercy and kindness. Your mercy endures forever, Heavenly Father, and we ask uh, for your Holy Spirit to continually be with us. Let your angels of mercy and grace follow us all the days of our lives, following all our families and all of, of those uh, throughout the lands, Lord God, who are going through the challenging times uh, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, and physically, and materially, Lord God. Let them first seek the kingdom of God and your righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And Lord, we declare and we decree in the name of Jesus, it is by your stripes that we will be healed. We thank you, Father, for your mercy and your love, for loving us always, for protecting us. Father God, we just ask for you to continually be with us 
and allow us all, Lord God, just to come closer to you, come closer to each other, loving one another, and just doing all things that glorify your name and your kingdom. We thank you once again, Father God, in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. We pray and all say, Amen. 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 Amen.